if you've been a Christian very long, and it doesn't take very long at all, you discover that, and you uncover pretty quickly, that there are, quite frankly, disappointments in what you thought Christianity was as compared to what Christianity is. You know, you got saved, you know, and you got all excited and wound up because you got this really exciting, cool-looking band, you know, they they had purple hair and spikes, you know, or they had tats, you know, and they had the rap, you know, and they were doing the thing, you know, and being this and being that, you know, and they could show you their belly and they could show you their eyes, you know, and they were dripping tears and they were like, you know, they had everything you could imagine, you know, not of this world, N-O-T-W, you know, the whole shtick. I've been there, you know, the Jesus people. Jesus freaks, you know, we were there. We had long hair and beards, you know, and we thought we were like the ultimate dropouts of society. And it didn't take long before we got disappointed in some ways. Some things about what was going on in the Jesus movement disappointed us. And some of us expressed it, Keith Green being one of them. He had a way of causing us to reevaluate where we were coming from as opposed to where we were going because he wanted to get us there quickly <coughs> you will be disappointed there are things in your life that are going to come up that you don't know how to deal with things that will happen in your Christian walk you really aren't prepared to deal with completely and God knows that you see Jesus said to Peter in a very interesting thing. He told Peter, and Peter was, you know, very, God, I'll serve you no matter what. I'll follow you all the days of my life. You know, one of those kind of guys. You know, you you know what they're like. You know, they're all excited. They get all wound up on the latest, greatest thing that comes along. You know, first they were this kind of Christian, and then suddenly, you know, now we have like hard rock Christian. So we've got the hard rock, you know, they jump into that bandwagon. And then the next thing comes along and they're like, oh, well, we're country Christian. So we're going to jump into country, you know, they kind of like, you know, kind of do the polka dance, you know, one minute they're over here, the next minute they're over there, you know, they're kind of jumping into all the different bandwagons, you know, and circling and making a little kind of like, uh, you know, protected area where they can kind of like do the routines, you know, go round and round and round circles jumping on to the latest greatest thing and Peter was one of those kind of people well you know one minute he's with the Gentiles oh next minute he's with the Jews oh next minute he's with the Pentecostals oh next minute he's with the Catholics Catholics? ooh and he was kind of like you know jumping around to whatever the latest greatest wherever there was a lot of people were and he partied and had fun with each one now Paul was similar to Peter Paul had the ability to go into each one of these same places that Peter had been. He was the type of person who knew who he was and knew what he had to do and knew where he was going in order to get there and what it would cost him, his life. Peter got disappointed when at some point in time Jesus came up to him and said, Peter, you're going to deny me. And he goes, uh-uh, oh, man, not me, uh -uh. No way, dude. I'm it. I'm in it. I'm here for the, the duration. And Jesus said, no. But I prayed for you. Satan wants to sift you like sand, but I have prayed for you that once you have been tried, you will strengthen your brethren. And as Jesus sought to remind Peter later by telling him to feed my sheep, Peter took time to learn the hard way the lessons we all learn about disappointment what we think we know until we're proven and tested to find out what we really apply in our lives because we all have an image of ourselves that we think we are we think we're pretty special because after all that's the way that the gospel was presented to us we're special we're somebody God died for Ooh, we're somebody that God gave his life for. Ah, we're somebody that Jesus took the sufferings for our health and our wealth and our prosperity. Yee, wee. And we think, oh boy, this is cool. I like this. But then 
we begin to look at it in light of the scriptures and we kind of ponder, well, how could those children of Israel have made such a big mistake? Man, I wouldn't be like them. How could Saul have turned his back on his calling and quit being the king of Israel and take for himself certain things? I wouldn't be like that if I was in charge. We begin to look around and study the scriptures and say what we are as opposed to what we aren't. If we're not like them, Lord. We'll be like Peter or Paul or Barnabas. But will we? I've been a Christian 35 plus years. I have had multiple things in my life that have floored me, stomped me, romped me, chomped me. I've had times where I've turned my back on God and said, fine, I've had it. It's over with. Was I a prodigal? No, I was rebellious. Rebellious? And you're a Christian? You betcha. Because you see, it's natural and normal to have those thoughts and concepts, to have those feelings, to have those directions in life where even Abraham, the father of our faith, was faithless. But he knew where to turn to. He knew how to cling to. He knew what to do when the time was right. And he needed to have a relationship with God alone. God will bring you alone to be with him. God is in the process of developing this thing called life in you. The light of God has come upon you. And that light was in him. And we beheld the light as if the only begotten Son of God. But men recognize not the light. Lest they come to the light and their deeds be exposed for what they were. Because you see, each one of us have in our heart evil. We have a sinful nature. We have an evil nature. And in that fleshy heart, there lacks not sin. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And we know that out of that heart comes lying and cheating and deceitfulness and corruption and all perverse manner of things. But I have good news for you. Because as we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. That means I can share with you the things that I have gone through. That I can tell you, you'll make it. Not because you'll be perfect and righteous and holy all the days of your life. But because God will take it and break it. God will break you of your self-will, of your independence of your rights and privileges and I have the right to bear arms and I have the right to freedom of speech and I have these rights to lay down my life at the foot of the cross and to take up my cross and deny myself and follow Jesus. I have that right but I have no other rights because you see the time will come when you have to lay down your crown at the foot of Jesus and then do as he did. Not my will, Father, but thy will be done. God, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. God, if it's possible, let someone else take this burden from me. God, if it's possible, let someone else suffer instead of me. But, not my will. Thy will be done. When you walk in the light of His will, when you talk one with another, encouraging one another with psalms and songs and spiritual songs, the ones that have meaning, really, are the ones that are personal to you because of some of the things that you've gone through. You know, those trials, tribulations the struggle, the agony, and the ecstasy. The things that you walked and talked with God and He brought you through. And you went, ah, I'm pretty special until you fell flat on your face. God's going to take you to a place of overcoming in this life 
as well as eternal life to come. Jesus said, Blessed is he that overcometh. Jesus spoke of overcoming the world and how to do that. Jesus walks and talks with us daily so that we would be overcomers, not participants in and not conquerors. Oh sure, we've been made more than conquerors through Christ who loved us, but we overcome the world by the love of God, by the word of our testimony and loving not our lives even unto death. Hmm. In light of the scriptures, how ought we to live? How ought we to be able to give to others the hope that lies within us, that strength of being that will cause them to be able to survive the things that are about to come upon the world? Oh God, Peter, Satan's going to sift you as sand. Peter, Peter. But I prayed for you. And when you have been restored, feed my sheep, heal your brethren, help those who are in need. The Christian walk isn't just talk. The Christian walk is paid for in blood. If you haven't suffered yet, you've denied a part of your life that God is going to bring to light one way or another. Because your secret sins and though there be many, will be revealed. And God wants to reveal them, to bring them out into the light. Not to bring you down, per se, unless you set yourself up as righteous, but to bring them to the surface so that you can give them away to Him, to forgive you, to remove them far from you as far as the East is from the West. Because you see, some Christians somewhere at some point in time thought, hey, since I'm born again, I don't have to deal with sin anymore. Since I am born of the Spirit, I don't have to walk in that body of flesh, so I can just rebuke it, refuse it, and redeem my flesh as well as my soul and spirit to God. But you can't, because the Spirit warreth against the flesh in the flesh against the spirit. You're in a battle for your soul. Will you win with God or will Satan win with the world? Your soul is the battleground. Your feelings and emotions are the place where you determine for yourself whether there will be light there or darkness. Jesus said it this way, if your eye be full of light. The sunrise, look at it. The light is coming. Behold, the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Behold, the light is coming. The word of God is light. And in him is no darkness and no variableness, no turning aside to the left or the right. Behold the light. If your eye be full of light, how great is the light within. But if your eye be full of darkness, Oh, look how bad the world's getting. The night has come. It's dark. It's terrible. Corrupt men and wicked ways and politicians have brought it to an end. This is the last days. Oh, God, you know, bring judgment, bring fire, bring death and destruction. God, get them. Let your eye be full of darkness. How great is the darkness therein? For what is light? And what is that with which God calls in the Word the light of the world? What are you doing, Christian? Are you being delivered from the world or delivered to the world? Because God will use what He needs to accomplish His will. But like a vessel full of light, how bright he can stand when he shines it in the darkness. For when the world is dark, God wants to raise up a light. Are you that light? Are you shining bright? Have you filled your lamps with oil, so to speak? Prepared yourself for the time such as this? Has God brought you to the place to be a light? Are you burning bright? Or have you turned your back on the light? And now you've chosen darker ways to walk in the way. 
You've chosen to abide with the world and its ways, to choose to methodologies that <laughs> may not have been around at the time of Jesus. And if he had only known, we could have saved the world back then. Yep, if that Jesus, if he could have figured it out, you know, he could have waited until now, these latter days, and man, we would have, like, saved the world today. But, yeah, you know, Jesus came in. Waited too long. He came too soon. He should have came when technology was around. Yeah, we could have iPad it. We could have got it done in a nanosecond. If thy eye be full of light, how great is the light. Many sins I have known. And some sins stayed with me all my life. And over my life, God took them away one by one by one. Because there were strongholds in my life. There were castles that needed to be torn down stone by stone by step by step. And I couldn't do it of myself. I could not go to a deliverance ministry and be, oh, delivered, oh, great. Because you see, deliverance ministries deal with the things of the Spirit. But they couldn't deal with my flesh. They said, oh, Satan's got your flesh and we'll keep Satan away from your flesh. Oh, good. Thank you, deliverance ministry. Thank you for putting a hedge around my flesh. But I'm the corrupt one. My flesh, that is. And in me there dwelleth no good thing, my flesh, that is. And so, deliverance ministry, how can I abide by that with which you have done for me when I still sin in my flesh? Oh, we'll deliver you again and again and again. Have you ever been disappointed? you pray for that healing and it didn't come? Did you ask for that word and it didn't come true? Did you get something from someone and it proved out wrong? If thy eye be full of light, how great is the light within? If thy eye be full of light, how great the light therein. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If that I be full of light, how great is the light therein? Could it be that the light of the world is in the Word of God and the Word of God is Jesus? So, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word is God, was God, and ever shall be God? How great is the light therein? But if thy eye be full of darkness, how great is the darkness? <coughs> if thy eye be full of light, how great is the light? And if thy glasses be on thy chest, how great is the test? <laughs> Beginning to wonder there, weren't you? <laughs> Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions, and as a cloud thy sins. I, even I am he that blots out thy transgressions for my own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, 
they shall be as wool. I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. Thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. Who is the God like unto you that pardons iniquity? He retains not his anger forever, because he delights in mercy. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. To him be glory, to him be dominion, forever and ever and ever. Amen. He has delivered me from my sins. He has cleansed me from my transgressions. He has forgiven my iniquities. He is pardoning all my failures. He is at work both to do and to will of his good pleasure. He is the light. Hmm. We walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. But if we don't have fellowship, are we walking in the light? If we are at odds with our brethren, are we walking in the light? If your eye be full of darkness, how great is the darkness? If I see darkness, if I'm looking at darkness, if I'm perceiving darkness, how great is the darkness therein? If I see fault in my brethren, if I judge my brothers, if I see the world and how dark the ways, am I in the light as he is in the light? Am I walking in the light? Or have I become the darkness therein? Jesus said, I am the way. He has forgiven my iniquities. He has pardoned all my sins. He is the one who is at work in me. He is the one causing me to do that which is pleasing in his sight. Hmm. He is and I am. <laughs> 